Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now an interesting question that might arise in your mind is, we saw so many different organisms and these different organisms are very much different from each other, be it their structure, be it their behavior, uh, so they are very much different from one another. And we also saw that these different organisms, they live in many different environments. Now the question is how these different organisms live in such different environments. Like when you think of uh, living in salty water all the time. So I mean it, it sounds very weird that how can somebody live in water with such high salt content with such high salt content. Similarly, it might sound very weird to think of an organism living in a desert with no water anywhere. So this is where we talk about a concept called adaptation. Adaptation is another interesting concept which helps different living organisms to live in different environments. So the features and habits of organisms which help them to adjust in different types of climates. That is what we call as adaptation. Now, you might be a little confused at this moment that uh, how can organisms know what kind of weather it is living in? Now, I'll give you some examples. Think of this polar bear. Have you ever seen this polar bear in your locality or have you ever seen it in a forest? No. Where does it survive? It survives in polar regions. And how is the climate in polar regions? It is extremely cold. But when you look at the structure of this polar bear, you would see that they have thick fur over their body and this thick fur provides a lot of warmth to them which helps them to survive in very cold climate. And that is why they are found in polar regions. Think of a camel. Where do you normally see a camel? In a place like a desert. Now why are they found in desert? That's because these camels, they have some special ability within themselves to survive in deserts. Now, deserts are areas where you do not get a lot of water, where there is not too much of vegetation, you do not have too many plants, trees, etc. So, only those type of animals which can survive with very less water, which can even survive without water for quite a few days, only those kind of animals can survive there. Now, when you look at a camel, it has that ability that it can take in excess amount of water at once and then you it utilizes that huge amount of water gradually inside its body. Therefore, it can live up to 10-14 days even without water. So, Overall, the need for water in case of camel is lesser than that of other animals. Therefore, they can very comfortably uh, survive in desert. And this is the reason why polar bears are not seen in desert because they are not adapted to survive in desert. Similarly, the camels are not seen in polar regions because they cannot survive in polar regions. Now we will look at, now when I say adaptation, there are many different adjustments that the body of an organism does to survive in an environment. So we will talk about a few examples of animals which adjusts in many different ways to survive in their habitat. So let us start with the adaptation of camel. So when you talk about a camel, they have large feet. Now their feet is designed in such a way, their feet is such that they can very comfortably walk over the sand because deserts, they have sand all over. So have you ever tried to walk over sand? Now if we try to walk over sand, you know, it's very difficult. Our speed of walking will reduce a lot when we try to walk on sand because that the you know whenever you uh, put your feet it goes inside again you have to put a lot of force to like take even one step so it takes a lot of time and we are not at all comfortable walking over sand but when you look at camel their feet is like very large and it is designed in such a way in a flat way such that they can very comfortably move over the sand so these large feet in a way spreads the load of the entire animal on sand and that's how it helped them to walk over sand. Bushy eyelashes. Now, if, if you ever got a chance to observe a camel very closely, then you would have seen that their eyelashes have lot of hair like structures, like a bushy appearance. 
that prevents the sand from entering into their eyes because if you uh, if you have ever been to a desert you would have seen that it, one thing is there is sand all over secondly there is very very less number of trees because of which whenever wind blows the sand tends to you know move blow from one place to another so there are chances that sand might enter into our eyes and once particles of sand enter into eyes it can cause irritation it can even cause infection in the eyes so therefore now camels they cannot wear sunglasses all the time right so there is a natural adjustment within the camel a natural adaptation that is they have bushy eyelashes so these bushes they will prevent the sand particles from entering into their eyes nostrils if you observe the nostrils of camel so they have a lining of hair which again prevents the entry of sand particles also camels can close their nostrils fully to prevent the entry of sand so the that ability is there hump hump is a very special feature of camel which makes them look different from other animals so this hump is the storehouse of energy so it stores energy in the form of fat tissues and whenever there is scarcity of food the fat stored in the hump is metabolized to provide energy so a lot of people think that the hump stores huge amount of water it is not like that hump basically contains the fat tissues but since we all know that fats are very rich source of energy so whenever there is lack of food because as i said in desert areas you will not get enough water you will not get enough food also so sometimes there might be lack of food so during that time these fat tissues will get converted to produce energy so energy will get produced inside the body even without intake of food conserve water now this animal has the ability that it can drink up to uh, you know huge amount of water up to 45 46 liters of water at a time so can you think such a huge amount of water at one time we drink one or two glasses of water and we feel that okay we can't drink any more water at least now so they can drink huge amount of water at once and then they keep utilizing that water over a longer period of time moreover there is no sweating in camels because of which what happens there is no loss of water because when we sweat what's that what happens we lose water from our body but in case of camels there is no sweating urine is very very concentrated concentrated means the like if you uh, look at the urine of human beings so it is very watery because it has a high water con content but when you look at the urine of uh, camel it is highly concentrated that is the water content is very less so the the camel doesn't lose any water any extra water from its body so it tries to store all the water within its body so that it can utilize it during tough times so all these help the camel to conserve water thick coat now in desert the speciality of the climate is that during the day time it is extremely hot but during night it is extremely cold so this animal also needs to protect itself from cold so this thick coat over its body provide warmth during the cold desert nights and it also helps the camel to sweat less so that's how the coat has dual function one is it helps to conserve water the other is it provides warmth at nights thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again